Hi there! Welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie. We are episode 185, if I'm remembering that correctly. I'm Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in the U.S. and I'm coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. So as you're rolling on in, say hello and where you're watching from. I had fun seeing your comments before the show. I see Jerry. Hello. Long time no talk. Hi, Patty. Hi, Ginger. Hello, Jeannie from Snowing, California. Hi, Gina. Hi, Chris. Hi, Brenda Lee. Hello, Pam. Ileana. Welcome. Happy Wednesday. We are going to do three St. Patrick's Day projects. Now, I know we're only a week away from St. Patrick's Day. The intent is for you to use what you have in your stash. And these projects don't have to be used for St. Patrick's Day. They'd be easy to change them up. So I've got two 3D projects and a card, a really quick and easy card. So we'll have some fun tonight. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Terry. Yay, welcome. I do have some show and tell, not from the kids this week. My birthday was on Sunday, so I got some really fun, happy mail I'm going to share with you. And then we'll jump right into the project. Hey, hey, from Tampa Bay. Norlene, hello. Hi, Christine from LaGrange. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Gay. All right, I'm going to jump into it. Otherwise, I'm going to keep saying hello to you guys. Welcome, welcome. Two quick things. My host code for the month of February is 93U3UR47. Sounds like a crazy formula. Please use that on orders with me under $150. If your order is $150 more, do not use the host code because you'll earn stamping rewards on those orders. And then orders of $75 or more with me this month will receive the Simply Shammy. You can never have enough of these, right? So those free gifts will ship out the middle of next month. Okay. Now I don't think the free gifts from last month are actually going to be delayed. I thought they were because the ribbon, the Blackberry Bliss striped ribbon has been on back order, but I just got notification it shipped. So I'm hoping to send out free gifts from what month are we in? February's orders out after the weekend. So stay tuned for that. I think that, oh, I've got one more thing. If you don't already have a demonstrator or you haven't ordered from me in a while, you can order current catalogs from me or request current catalogs from me at thepaperpixie.com slash happy mail. We're getting close to a new annual catalog. I'll be ordering those catalogs on April 1st, I think. So stay tuned for that. If you are already, if you've ordered from me in the last six months, you're going to be getting that catalog from me. So it's, I'm excited. I get to see it as a demonstrator on the 24th. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and flip the camera here and let's do show and tell really quickly. This was actually a little Valentine's card from my team member, Linda, but it was too cool not to show. Oh, look at that major fancy fold there. How cute is that? A little cute note from her, but she really um, did a number on this one. It is beautiful. I absolutely love it. So thank you, Linda. Again, with that hydrangea designer series paper. I love this. Look at that bow. This one is from Kathy Fierst. Thank you. I have to always check, but this is beautiful. I love that double loop bow there. This is also, I believe, I'm looking. Yes, my team member, Linda. She's so good at sending me cards. Linda, thank you if you're watching. But look at how popped up those butterflies are. It's two layers of dimensionals. Absolutely love this card. Thank you. And Jackie Beers, I just got your birthday card today. Thank you. Look at the wink of Stella. I'm my little purple cocktail. Purple's my favorite color. Go team purple. <laughs> really, really sweet. Thank you, Jackie. This is from Norlene. I think that this is an Anna Griffin card, right, Norlene? I love this. Handmade by Norlene, so thank you. And then wait till you guys see this. I'm so glad Stacy's on. Stacy, I got this package yesterday. Oh my goodness, I had to untie the bow. I didn't attempt to tie it as perfectly as Stacy did, but look at this. This is a card box. And I think Rachel Tessman shared this in the last week or so. She also gave credit to someone that gave her the idea, but oh my goodness, I love, I, like I couldn't love it more. <laughs> this is so awesome. You're a rare find, my dear friend. Look at that. And then it's got pockets for cards, but look at this wow card that she made 
Oh my gosh. And I can't think of the product medley. It's the one with the succulents. Um, really, really, really sweet. She even stamped on the envelope. Look at this little thing for stamps. Ah, I can't. It's so awesome, Stacy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to treasure that. And she also put in some really yummy treats. I haven't tried these yet, but I can't wait. Russell Stover strawberry creams. So thank you, Stacy. All right. What are we going to do first? Let's see. Is the the, gra the grape ribbon. I think that's what you're asking. Oh, the per you're right. The gorgeous grape ribbon you're asking. I haven't checked the inventory status report, Dabber Do, um, if that's back yet. I think it is still unorderable at the moment, but good question because it's a beautiful, beautiful ribbon. I'm thinking which project we're going to start with first. Let's do the card because I think that one will be quick and easy. Um, again, we're doing St. Patrick's Day. Now, this is a really quick and easy card. I'm kind of on, let's see, is there instructions somewhere for that card box? Yes, um, reach out to me and I'll send you a link to um, Rachel Tessman's live stream. Um, she is Stamp Your Art Out and she's got all the dimensions for that card box. Really, really awesome. All right, so here's the card we're making. I probably don't need this to be right in the middle of the camera here. Let's make some space here. I don't know, I've been on this kick for St. Patrick's Day to do um, these little belts. <laughs> like a little leprechaun belt is what I think of. I did post a project on my blog today with the mini curvy keepsakes box and the all dressed up dies. We're gonna put that together today as well. That will be really quick and easy. But we're gonna go ahead and do this one, start with the card and then we'll do the mini curvy keepsakes box. Then the, um, I've got a shadow box for you today with, for Andy's mints. And then stay on to the end because we've got prize patrol coming. So this comes from uh, Oval Occasions, this stamp set. Now I um, masked my stamp set to not have the little extra flourish. We're gonna use that again on another project as well. This little shamrock comes from the wreath builder dies. It's not really a shamrock, but it's these flowers. You get two of, well, you get actually a whole bunch of them, but two of this size. And I'm catching the glare there, I know. But the wreath builder dies. And I like that because it looked like a four leaf clo clover. But use what you have. You can use heart punches. You can use um, some of our flower punches and cut away one of the petals. There's a bunch of different things you can use that you already have in your stash to make it look like a shamrock. Um, so we are going to go ahead and put this together. This is quick and easy. I've got stuff cut. The only thing I'm going to show you how to do is the belt buckle. So I've got just Jade as my card base. This measures four and a quarter by 11 inches and I've scored it in half at five and a half. Now this is the side I scored on. I'm going to fold away. So I created a valley with my score line. I'm going to turn that valley into a mountain. I'm going to come in and burnish. I always like to put a layer of Whisper White, sorry, Basic White. Oh my gosh, I can't remember that. My husband's over here on the side watching for your questions, so he'll pop those up as you have them. Basic White, either I either like to use Basic White or Very Vanilla for the inside, and this measures four by five and a quarter. I'm gonna use multi-purpose liquid glue and just do a little bead of glue all the way around up to the edge. Place that on the inside and you'll have about an eighth of an inch of the Just Jade peeking behind it. I knew I was missing a piece. <laughs> I was so prepared for today, but I was like, this is, I feel like I'm almost too prepared here. Got these cello bags I put all my supplies in so that I could keep track of everything. What I forgot is the basic black layer, and this is gonna be three and three quarters by five. One of the things I love about the paper trimmer is just so easy to grab. There we go. Then I've got a layer that measures three and five eighths by four and seven eighths. And that's gonna give us about a 16th of an inch of the basic black as a border there. I'm gonna be brave and I'm just gonna stamp directly on the card and hope that it stamps straight. Normally I would recommend that you <laughs> 
don't put your pieces together just in case you need to flip your cardstock because that's why paper is double-sided right in case we make a mistake and again if you've got raised edges just come in with your bone folder and press those down I love doing layers on cards and had a great tip that came in last week that I always forget to do but if you're ever cutting things um, for your card you can always cut those out of the, your layer in the part that's not showing on the cards I could have cut out stuff from that basic black there the size of the white piece yes the inside one is four by five and a quarter and this one is three and five eighths by four and seven eighths okay and then I've got this pattern from the 2021, sorry, 2020 to 2022 in color designer series paper. This is the Just Jade. And this is the pattern that has the words on it that says share what, share what you love. Wait, I forgot to love what we do and share what we love. And then it's in multiple languages. This piece measures, oh my God, to measure that. I think it's one and a half. I changed up the, the dimensions one and three quarters okay one and three quarters by four and seven eighths that just gives us a little bit of it breaks up the card a little bit I'm running low on my glue as usual so I'm gonna that's just gonna fit right on the whisper white layer I'm gonna put it all the way to the left there the liquid glue lets me slide that around I'm feeling a raised edge so let's burnish that down then I've got a basic black piece that's one and a quarter by three and five eighths and we're gonna put that right across the center here and if you need help with centering your card stock you can always use your grid paper and sort of line up the corners of your card and then you can line up your layers there. So now I've got gold foil. And then we're gonna use the stitched shapes dies, garden green. This is just jade, Tina. I'm gonna be using garden green and shaded spruce so three different greens tonight so the stitch shapes dies and i'm going to grab the two smallest of the squares get this out of the way we're going to bring in the stamp and cut and emboss machine And I loved your tips last week to take sticky tape and stick it to your clothing to kind of get rid of the stickiness. Great ideas. I checked out the mint tape as well that you guys recommended at scrapbook.com. I haven't ordered it yet, but I may order it to check it out. But tonight I'm going to use post-it tape because I forgot I had that and we're using it to do some masking. So I'm just, I should, probably should have done one long piece, but I'm going to layer my squares just kind of nest them together and make sure that I'm going to do this all in one fell swoop but I'm making sure that it's equidistant all the way around so basically the smaller square is centered in the larger square trying not to move them around here too much and then I'm going to post it tape it down you do want to take your time with this because it's really easy to get those squares off the mini I haven't I the mini is hiding behind me <laughs> I've been using the regular size so much today with all the projects that I just didn't it's funny you kind of get into a groove of using one versus the other and I needed this size for the mini Kirby keepsakes box the storage for my dies that is a great question so I am in the middle of sort of testing a couple of different ways I love the um, the pockets from stamp and storage that's what half of my dies are in and then i ordered some seven by ten job ticket holders from uline that's what this is and it's a full hold on 
It's a full vinyl pocket and I actually cut off so it would be 10 inches tall, but I cut off and I'll probably do a video for this if this is what I end up going with, but I cut it to six and a half inches in height and then I just added a little half circle finger, finger notch there. And I don't know, I'm really liking them. So this is from Uline 7x10, um, what's it called? Vinyl job ticket holders, okay? All right, so let's see if our belt buckle looks good. Yay, look at that. Okay, so that's our little belt buckle. I am going to center that here on the one and a quarter inch strip of basic black. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of liquid glue right on either side here, but not going past that inside square. It's gonna be hard for you to see, but I only put glue up to the edge of the interior square. Then I can line that up. This is kind of a fun little, um, St. Patrick's Day card, you can drop in the mail, it might get there by Wednesday. <laughs> and then I die cut the, um, that looks like a shamrock, but it's really a flower from the wreath builder dies. I'm gonna grab a dimensional, which is just the right size to put behind it. And I'm just gonna kind of put that off. On the left there. I'm using some of the same products <laughs> per project. These are the Gilded Gems. Put one of those right in the center to tie in that gold. And now let's do some stamping. So it's the Oval Occasion stamp set in the sentiment, So Lucky to Know You but I didn't want to put the flowers on the stamp, so I masked those out. There's two different ways you can do this. You can use a stamp and write marker and then only color on the words, or you can take the post-it tape or a post-it note or scotch tape and cover up those flowers. Now the bottom one is a little bit tricky because you kind of have to angle the post-it tape there's no way to get one angle for both. So I'm just gonna kind of, there's that one little flower in the corner. So that's how we're gonna mask it, okay? Now very important here, we're gonna use Just Jade ink. You gotta make sure that you remove the post-it tape before you stamp on your project. It's gonna be really messy post-it tape, but make sure you take that off. I should put it right in the trash can because I know what's going to happen. And then we are going to stamp this right in the center of this section and hope that it works. <laughs> Yay! So lucky to know you. Cute, cute little, um, I almost said Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day card. So that's the quick and easy card tonight. This card will post to my blog tomorrow on tomorrow's blog post. All right, let's do the cute little mini Kirby keepsakes box. Get my pieces and parts out. Here is what it looks like. How cute is that? I love this set of dies. If you don't already have it, add it to your stash because super cute. This comes from Itty Bitty Greetings. <laughs> I need to check myself on that. This is the Fine Art Ribbon. Let's see, why don't you, okay, great question, Gretchen. So, I live in Atlanta, and historically, the cling stamps used to not, because of the humidity, they used to not stick so well. So I just got in the habit of never putting the stickers on. Um, it's, um, I don't see a difference if I put the stickers on or not as far as getting my stamp straight, <laughs> to be honest. Um, so I just leave the stickers in the case. Um, and so when I resell them, the new owner can um, add the stickers if they want to or if they don't want to. But yeah, I just have never needed them. Um, I'm just in the habit of not using it, but great question. So that's a fine art ribbon. And then this little cute belt buckle comes from the all dressed up dies. 
So all dressed up dies. I cut out a piece of basic black from this long stitched strip. And then what I love about the buckles is you get two in one or four in two and run that through the big shot. You get two belt buckles and they even have some embossing to them. Look at that. And then you can actually get two Kirby Keepsakes St. Patrick's Day boxes out of this one strip. So you'll get two buckles, two strips, or one strip that you can get two out of. So that's the all dressed up dies. These are the mini Kirby Keepsakes box dies. And what I wanted to show you is you just need to cut a piece of cardstock or designer series paper to five and a half by five and a half. And this would be how you lay it. So you do corner to corner on these longer sides. And that's the perfect size to cut it out so you can conserve some paper that way. Okay. So I already cut that ahead of time. Again, this is real easy. I'm not even burnishing. I'm just folding on the score lines. The die already scores it for you. And then I'm going to take my bone folder on the back side and my thumb on the front and just gently curve each of these sides. You don't have to do it too much. And then these tabs here, we're just going to fold backwards. And get this out of the way and then where did I put? Here it is. I'm gonna grab the silicone mat because let's see I want to make sure I'm putting this on the right side okay so I'm just gonna take a strip and I'm gonna put some liquid glue on the back of it actually hold on got it can't forget this we're gonna feed it up and through that little belt buckle. How cute is that? Okay, so I just wanna make sure that I've got enough here to cover the front. And then I'm gonna put liquid glue along the back. Now I've got the silicone mats in case I get uh, liquid glue um, that overlaps the edge. So I'm gonna put glue on the back of the belt buckle here because I want that to stay in place. You can be messy. The silicone mat keeps your work surface mess free. So I'm just getting that lined up and I'm going to center that belt buckle. Kind of make sure that that's straightened and in place. We put a little bit of glue on the back of the belt buckle. This is so cute. And how cute would this be for Christmas? A little Santa belt. All right, so you see I had a little bit of glue hanging over, but that just went right on the silicone mat, silicone mat. And then I'm just gonna come in and trim a little bit of fussy cutting there. Look at that, oh, too cute. I think I still need this mat. I'm gonna put a Ferrero Rocher in there, and then we're gonna close this up probably should close up both sides before I do that. <laughs> and then that has a little bit of a notch that will lock it in place. So it won't open on its own. Was this die with a stamp? It was with a stamp set. So the, um, are you asking about the Kirby Keepsakes? The Kirby Keepsakes used to have a stamp set. The stamp set was, this one is garden green. Thank you, Dina, or Deanna. Um, the, Mini Kirby Keepsakes used to have a stamp set. I think it was in a previous catalog. That stamp set retired, but there was a stamp set that came out in, um, I'll get to that question in a second. There was another stamp set that came out in the mini catalog that goes really well with this as well. It had hearts and all kinds of things. Other candies that would fit in here, Hershey's Kisses, Gold Coins, Rolos, um, Hershey's Nuggets, Little tiny things. You could put a couple of those Bob's peppermints in here for Christmas. Really, really cute. All right, so I've got a scrap piece of uh, basic white. I almost said whisper white. The ink I'm using is Garden Green. And this comes from, this is a double stamp set, Itty Bitty Greetings. So it's got some of everything, but we've got Have a Lucky Day for St. Patrick's Day, okay? So ink that up, garden green. Okay. I'm 
I'm going to punch this out with the classic label punch. And I'm sort of putting it off to the right side. I'm going to come back in and give us a banner end by feeding it back into the classic label punch. And then I'm just going to, I'm going to eyeball that in just a second. Let me put that off to the side. Here is the beautiful fine art ribbon. It's three eighths of an inch, but it's got that beautiful gold thread in it. So I'm just going to do a bunny ears bow. So two loops. Tie those in a knot. Because it's uh, cloth, it does, it's a little bit difficult to zhuzh, but take your time. I'm gonna try to make it as small as I can. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Come in with scissors. I use the Avery, well, that's a loaded question bar because I have a, a bunch of different envelopes. For my stamps, I store them in the Avery L stamp and die pockets. You can find all of this stuff except for the vinyl envelopes on my favorites page at thepaperpixie.com slash favorites. Um, so Avery L stamp and die pockets for my stamps and then either a combination of the stamp and storage um, stamp pockets or the Uline 7x10 job ticket holders that I trimmed down. Of course, now I'm looking for my glue dots. Oh, they're right in front of my face. <laughs> I'm going to do three uh, mini glue dots, so one behind the knot, one sort of just to the left and just to the right of the knot. That just kind of prevents the bow from moving around. Now when I put this down, I'm only going to place it on just this part because I want people to be able to open it and close it. So I'm only putting it on the flap because then folks can open and close it and that ribbon stays put. Okay, really easy. Then I'm going to come in with Oh, is that the mini? Or? This is the mini, Deborah. So the, the regular Curvy Keepsakes die was actually two pieces. What I love about this one is it's just one piece. You can just run it through the machine once. All right, let's trim. I'm just trimming off a little bit off the end here because I'm going to tuck that right under the bow. Then I'm just going to use a little bit of liquid glue just on the end there. and I'm going to tuck that right underneath and making sure I'm getting it on that flap. Okay, you can open this if you need to. And then just press that into place. This goes together really quickly and easily. But this would be so cute for obviously St. Patrick's Day for Christmas. So fun. The mini curvy keepsakes with the all dressed up dies to create that cute little belt. All right, so that's project number two. Let's jump into number three, which I'm most excited about. I'm gonna show you two versions because I couldn't stop with the, um, the belt. So here's a cute little belt one. <laughs> but I couldn't figure out a sentiment setup that I loved. So this is the version we're gonna make today. So lucky to know you. You probably recognize that sentiment from the first card we made. But we have got a little shadow box that holds four Andy's mints. I do want to give a shout out. Let's see, is this always made with cardstock? You can use either one, Kathleen, um, with the mini curvy keepsakes die. Um, either designer series paper or cardstock works. I want to give a shout out to my friend Candy Ford at stampcandy.net. She did a very similar project just with five Andy's mints, a shadow box, and I just thought it was so cute. I couldn't get it out of my head. So that's what we're making tonight. That'll be the last project, and then we will jump into Prize Patrol after that. So hang in there because shadow boxes really aren't as hard as they look. I'm gonna, I should probably should swap this out. All my little measurements, right? 
that off to the side. I got my template here. All right, so we've got a piece of shaded spruce now. So this is looking garden green on my computer screen, but um, we used Just Jade for the card, Garden Green for the Mini Curvy Keepsakes die, and now we're using Shaded Spruce. So three different wonderful greens to use for St. Patrick's Day. And this piece measures seven and a half inches by eight inches. You can only get one of these out of a sheet of eight and a half by 11. But what I recommend is on the eight and a half inch side, cut off the half inch strip. So you just have the little half inch, and then you'll have a, a larger section um, on the 11 inch side that you can add to your stash of scraps. So with shadow boxes, we always start with the same four measurements. I love shadow boxes. Like I try to come up with a shadow box for all kinds of things. But again, seven and a half by eight. This blog, how long does it, oh, good question. Hey, okay, grab your water. <laughs> Lily came down because she forgot her water. Kathleen, it all depends on the project. Um, some ideas come to me quickly or I've thought about them, them ahead of time and then try to put it to paper. But yeah, that's a tough question to answer because it all depends. Shadow boxes are usually pretty quick for me to figure out though. All right, so on all four sides, we're gonna score this at half of an inch, one and three eighths, one and seven eighths, and two and three quarters. And then I'm just gonna keep rotating clockwise, counterclockwise, it doesn't matter. We're gonna repeat the same measurement. So half, one and three eighths, one and seven eighths, two and three quarters. I'm like throwing myself off here. <laughs> I'm rotating it the wrong way, I think, for my brain. Half inch, one and three eighths, one and seven eighths, two and three quarters. And the final side, again, half inch, one and three eighths, one and seven eighths, and two and three quarters. Now I'm gonna do a couple of score lines to help us put this together. So on the short side, the seven and a half inch side, I gotta look at my notes here. We're gonna score down to the second score line at three and a quarter. So stop right at that second score line. I know you might not be able to see that, but we stopped there. So three and a quarter and four and a quarter. I'm gonna rotate it 180. So going to the other short side, three and a quarter, second score line, four and a quarter, second score line. Now I'm gonna to rotate to the long side and we're gonna score this at two and a quarter, but this time down to the fourth score line. I'll show you the template in a minute, but see I stopped there. And then five and three quarters. And then rotate it 180 to the opposite long side, two and a quarter, down to the fourth score line, five and three quarters. Okay, done with the scoring. <laughs> I'm gonna convert all of you at some point to loving shadow boxes. I'm just gonna keep trying. So the next thing I wanna do is fold and burnish on all the score lines that go all the way across the paper. Don't worry about those short score lines. Those are just gonna help us with our cutting, okay? They're cutting guides instead of score lines, really, that we need to fold on. And this really is one of those projects that you can mass produce, obviously to a certain extent, but I would do everything in stages. Cut all the pieces, score all the pieces, and it really will go together fairly quickly, especially when you get the hang of shadow boxes. Oops. All right, so here is the template. As you can see, we're cutting away a lot of stuff. However, that is the magic of shadow boxes, okay? So now I have, I'm gonna turn it to where we've got our short score lines at the top and the bottom. And I'm gonna come in one, two, three, four score lines and cut up one, two, three, four. Kind of ignore counting that short one, okay? So in four and up four. Then come in three and cut up four. So we've kind of created this strip here, okay? I'm gonna turn it a quarter of a turn. We're gonna remove this whole section of all those score lines. 
So that whole piece, you can't really reuse that because you got a bunch of score lines in there. If you had a tiny punch, you might be able to get something out of that. It's like a seven eighth, eighth of an inch, seven eighths of an inch square section. And then this strip that we have left, I'm gonna come in and cut on that score line that we didn't burnish on. That's gonna create a tab that's gonna give this box some structure. The template will be on, my, on the website on Friday's blog post. So this project, the card will post tomorrow. The shadow box will post on Friday with a shortened video tutorial and you'll get a picture of the template, all the measurements, all the good stuff so you can make it yourself. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. A shadow box for Milano cookies. Patty, that is a great question. Um, which size of the Milano cookies? One of the challenges that we run into with shadow boxes is because it uses so much cardstock, sometimes it causes us to not be able to create a shadow box easily because it might, we might re require a piece of paper more than 12 by 12, but I will keep that in mind. So I'm just repeating the same thing just on the opposite side here, okay? Then come in and remove. I'm gonna just show you really quickly what we're working on right now. Sort of this section at the bottom, okay? The next thing I'm gonna do is gonna cut up those short score lines here, the ones that we only went down to the second horizontal, like so, okay? Now, to create this quintessential shadow box frame shape, we need to cut, and I'm gonna fold this out of the way. We need to cut, so this is where that short score line ends. We need to cut on an angle right there. So I like to take my scissors and cut from this score line on the diagonal to the bottom of that cut that we made. And I'm gonna to try to do that all in one cut. That's gonna give me a straight edge. So this is what we just removed, okay? I like to flip this over. Since I'm right-handed, it's always easier for me to cut with my scissors on this angle. Same thing, cut to the bottom of that short. So now what we've got is something that looks like this. So this side is done for the most part, except for trimming off the tabs or mitering the tabs. We'll do those last. Then I'm just gonna rotate it and pretty much repeat the same thing. I like putting it in this long direction where we've got those short score lines, okay? And then I'm gonna come in four score lines and cut up four score lines. This is sort of how my brain works. If it's easier for you to cut it in a different way, go for it. The template is great for reference. Okay, turning it a quarter of a turn, removing all those score lines. and then cutting on that short score line that we didn't burnish to create that tab. Okay, almost done cutting and then the next part is easy. So I'm coming in four score lines, cutting up four score lines from the left, then in three up four, rotate it a quarter of a turn, remove all those score lines the score lines are really just a means to an end. And then come cut on that short score line to leave that tab. The tabs are not 100% necessary, but I like the structure that it gives the shadow box. So now what we're gonna do is just kind of fold things out of the way. Let's miter those tabs. We're gonna make this one easy. I'm only gonna miter the tabs. I'm not gonna worry about the other edges. And of course I forgot to do that angle piece, didn't I? <laughs> Come in and notch. I'm just cutting right up the middle. Good question, Alicia. Yep, right up the middle of the score line. Nothing fancy here. All right, so let me take care of this. Again, cutting up those short score lines. Move stuff out of the way, then cut on an angle, and basically just coming down a score line from the bottom of that cut line, cutting on the angle. Turning it around. There we go. I use the 
um, Creative Crate from Stampin' Storage. I've got that linked on my favorites page as well. There's a whole Stampin' Storage section of all the Stampin' Storage stuff that I love to use. All right, so this, I believe, is all done as far as cutting. Now it's the fun part to put it together. Again, this picture of this template will be on my blog on Friday. Now that I got my little mini ruler, I've been using that to tear my tear and tape and it's awesome. So I'm gonna grab tear and tape here and I'm gonna put that on all four of the outside sections. I'm going right up to the score line, however, as opposed to the edge. Oh, I love that. <laughs> and then I'll show you a little bit up close what I mean by the score line instead of the edge. So the tear and tape I'm putting up to the score line as opposed to the cut edge. You can tear it as well, but this just gives a really nice quick and clean tear. I'm a big fan of this. Then we want to put the tear and tape on each of the tabs, again, going up to the score line. I'm gonna try to keep those straight because if I do them on an angle, then I just kind of have to flip flop. <laughs> is this box the same size? It is different, Susan. I've got a whole bunch of shadow boxes. Most of them are all different, slightly different sizes. This ruler I found on Amazon. It's linked on my favorites page. It comes in a pack of two, um, a 12 inch ruler and a six inch ruler. Do I use magnet? I do, the magnet sheets from Stampin' Storage. Great questions. All right, now on the back <laughs> is the ruler. It is, yes, Kristen, it is linked on my favorites page. I think it's underneath the crafty tools section. Then on the back side, I'm gonna put tear and tape just right along that little angle. You don't have to be pretty about the tear and tape on the back side. nobody's gonna see it but that kind of helps the frame piece stick down. There we go, and then one more. It's a Mr. Pen. I love the little mustache on there. Mr. Pen um, ruler. I like it because it doesn't have the cork on it. That means I can get real close to my project. All right, so we've got all the tear and tape down. I'm going to have you take one more look. So we did all four outside sections, the four tabs, and then the four diagonal pieces. I'm just going to bring in my silicone mat just because we're going to start to pull off some of the backing here. Where is my, here we go. Take your pick tool. I'm just going to come in. I'm removing all the backings. Just easiest to do it all at once. Since we use that ruler to tear it, I don't have any tear and tape hanging over the edge, but if you did, you can just fold it back on itself. And just gently remove, that's why I like to use the silicone mat, um, gently remove the, the angled pieces because we've got all that tear and tape on the back side. The silicone mat prevents it from sticking to my surface. All right, now the magic. This is my favorite part, okay. We're going to put it in this direction. We've got our wider piece sort of top and bottom. Okay. I'm going to fold on the first score line. That's the one that the tear and tape is on and the third. So first, third. Okay. And then I can press that down flat. That is going to just line it up so that it's perfectly square. We're using our score line. So again, folding on the first and third, pressing down. Okay, being careful not to press. I should have left my silicone mat there because <laughs> that part's sticking. Okay, so we've got those long sides. Now we're gonna line up our tabs. So this score line with this cut edge, just pressing that tear and tape in place. Work your way around all those corners. There we go. And now the last thing we need to do is tuck these in. So what I like to do is take this edge, kind of curving it, as I'm sticking to the tear and tape, but curving it in and making sure that this edge hits the back wall, if that makes sense. So it's kind of pressed against the back, the back wall and then I'm gonna fold that down. 
And as I do that, I'm just sharpening the corners, tightening everything up, and then pressing in place. Now remember, we put tear and tape underneath those angle pieces, okay? So again, it's so hard to show this part, but sort of curving it down. I want this edge to hit the back wall. Once I feel it kind of hit the back wall, then I can roll it down into place. And as I do that, I just kind of press in the corners so I get that nice finish. And everything is in place. We've got those tabs to give us those nice adhered corners and look at that fun little shadow box. So the interior dimensions, if I'm remembering this correctly, it's one inch by, I'm gonna have to measure, hold on. One by one and a half by seven eighths, okay? I found these Andy's mints at Walmart. These are the regular size, not the bigger size. And I'm just gonna grab four of those and those will fit right in the shadow box. Now it's pretty easy to shake them out. So the recipient shouldn't have a hard time. Okay, so that is the Andy's mints. Now let's do the quick and easy belly band. The container that you file your dies. I, um, that's also on my favorites page, the Creative Crate by Stampin' Storage. They come in three different sizes, small, medium, and large. You can get them with a cover or without a cover. Mine is without a cover and I put it right inside of my drawer. And I promise I will do a craft room tour at some point. All right, so this paper comes from Forever Greenery. I think that's right. Yes, Forever Greenery. Now this piece I cut a little bit too small. So the measurement I'm gonna give you is two and nine sixteenths, which is one sixteenth larger than two and a half by six and a quarter. Okay, if you strategically cut your paper, you can get quite a few of them out of a sheet of 12 by 12. But I think you can see there's a little bit of the shadow box that hangs over and that's just the nature of how the box goes together. I cut this one to two and a half, but really should be two and nine sixteenths. I'm gonna just kind of center the box and then I'm just gonna manually kind of fold. I'm not doing it way too tight, but I'm just sort of folding or I should say burnishing a bit as I round it around the corner. This is the best way to get a belly band to fit your shadow box as opposed to scoring. Okay, so one more piece of tear and tape and actually <laughs> as the Andy's mints come out. I forgot it was upside down. I'm gonna then fold on those score lines and burnish. And as I do that, I'm just lining up the edge here so those are straight. No need for measurements here except for the starting piece of paper. Okay, then tear and tape on the back of one of those sides. All right, I got the backing pulled off. Now we can wrap this around the box. Make sure I know which side has the backing. I'm being gentle, not trying to wrap it too tight, like so. And then you'll have to break it in just a little bit. That will slide on and off. So cute. All right, we'll be quick about the sentiment here. I'm just gonna grab this, why not? We're gonna use shaded spruce for the ink. Again, we're gonna use that same stamp set. Where did I put it? Here it is. Same thing, I'm gonna mask. Again, or you could use your stamp and write marker. Just trying to be strategic about where I place the post-it note tape. Get the mess off. Scrap piece of Whisper White. I got a one and a half inch circle punch. Perfect size for that sentiment. Then I'm using the Story Label Punch. 
I'm going to punch that out of gold foil. I'm encroaching on your space over here. If you've got, see how the way the punch does, you got kind of curled edges there. I just kind of take my bone folder and smooth that out. All right, so liquid glue. Messed up on the paper. <clears throat> I messed up on the paper? Basic white. Oh, I said, <laughs> I said whisper white again. Oh, good grief. All right, so a little bit of liquid glue on the back of the basic white. <laughs> Need to be shocked every time I say it the wrong way. And that lines up perfectly on that story label punch. Then I die cut a circle already because I knew this would be a longer live in shaded spruce from the stitched, the stitch shapes dies and it's the second smallest. Okay, I love these dies. And that one we're going to layer for a little pop of color behind that gold foil. We've got our little shamrock again from the wreath builder dies. Oh, you should see my workspace that's off camera. <laughs> I'm gonna stick that up on a dimensional, just off here to the right. Gonna grab a smaller gilded gem, cover that dimensional, that's the trick there. And then we're just gonna put a little bit of liquid glue on the back of that circle and center it on the front of our shadow box. You could pop it up on dimensionals too, but I thought the shamrock was popped up on dimensionals. That was enough dimension for it. And there we have our Andy's Mints shadow box. So this one again is an easy one to change for different um, occasions. Would be just so cute for a table favor. How, who wouldn't love some Andy's Mints after a meal? This would be cute for Thanksgiving, for Christmas, for showers, all kinds of fun stuff. And I know you can find other things to fit in here as well. I will include the interior dimensions on my blog post on Friday. So if you want, if you don't want to miss a thing, you can subscribe to receive my blog updates via email. Just go to the paperpixie.com slash subscribe and you'll get an email each time I publish a new post. Let's get into some prize patrol. Hopefully you're all tuned in still. So drum roll, last week's winners. Let me get back here to um, claiming prize patrol. This is for the winners. So dauber do, if you're still on, you won, you're one of last week's winners. Congratulations. And Donna Gibbs, congratulations. So claim your prize at the paperpixie.com slash prize patrol. I'll get these in the mail along with a handmade card from my stash. That is that. Congratulations. And then drum roll for prize patrol. U.S. residents only, I just ship, in, ship within the U.S. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure that you, are, you leave hashtag prize patrol in the comments. I didn't even tell you what was the prize patrol. The painted texture 3D embossing folder and that ribbon we used tonight, the fine art ribbon. Hashtag prize patrol, Facebook, just leave it in the comments. YouTube, make sure you leave that in the comments of the video, not the live chat. And I will choose winners next Wednesday. So both my live watchers and my replay watchers have a chance. Don't add any spaces. Make sure you've got the right spelling so you'll be entered to win. Um, so that is Prize Patrol for this week. So thank you all so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Happy Wednesday and a week from tonight at St. Patrick's Day. I may or may not have something that I'm going to wear next Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks for joining me. I'm live every Wednesday night. You can always visit me at my blog, thepaperpixie.com. I try to post projects every weekday to inspire you. I also have a YouTube channel where all of my 
both my live stream and my pre-recorded video tutorials are posted. And if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed week. And I will see you next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time for episode 186. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Talk to you soon. Bye.